Now, having said about rights and obligations, for some time, we will deal with the subject matter with which the Contract Act is going to speak about. Now, Contract Act is going to speak about movable property. What is movable property? Property that can be moved, that can be lifted, where you can possess it in its concrete form. What is immovable property? That which cannot be moved. For example, Transfer of Property Act deals with immovable property, house, vacant site, land and all that. These are the examples of immovable property. Now, coming to movable property, again the Contract Act makes two important classifications. One is movable property which comes under chosen possession. Another classification is chosen action. What is the difference between chosen possession and chosen action? Chosen possession is mere possession itself conveys ownership. That is why it has been rightly said, possession is nine point in law. That means when you possess a particular commodity, you are the owner of it. That's why we say humorously, don't touch my pen, knife and wife. They belong to me. They are my property. But you can no more treat women as your property. She is a human being. Well, that is a different aspect and it goes at a tangent. Let us not waste our time on that. Now, so far as Contract Act is concerned, it deals with movable property. That is chosen possession. Mere possession itself conveys ownership. When you are having a 100 rupee note in your pocket, there is no need to say whether it belongs to you. The very fact that you are having a rupee note in your pocket, that signifies that you are the owner of that rupee. How you got it, mere possession itself conveys ownership. You see the rupee note again, on demand I promise to pay the bearer a sum of rupees you find the signature of the Governor, Reserve Bank of India. So, mere possession itself conveys ownership. What is chosen action? You have got to prove ownership though you are possessing that object. For example, you are having a promissory note. Now, the promissory note is payable, the money is payable only to the promisee. How did you get it? You got it assigned. How did you get that assignment? We have got to prove it in a court of law. Mere possession itself will not convey title. Where you have got to pay, how you got the possession, you have got to explain that is what is known as chosen action. Encashment of check and all that. So, the Contract Act is going to deal with chosen possession and chosen action. Now, I am going to the next important broad topic. Namely, contract deals with obligations and agreement. All contracts are agreements and obligations. But all agreements and obligations are not contract. In fact, the famous jurist Solomon has said, the law of contract is not the whole law of agreement, nor is it the whole law of obligations, but it deals with those agreement which creates obligations and those obligations which have got their source in agreement. What do you mean by this? All contracts are agreements and obligations. But all agreements and obligations are not contracts. Now we want to know with what type of obligation the contract act is going to speak, with what kind of agreement the contract act is going to deal with. Well, agreements are of three types. Agreement where rights are surrendered. Agreements where rights are assigned. Agreements where the rights are defined, protected, preserved and they are enforced. So, where you have got agreement which defines, preserves and protects, that is what is known as the agreement enforceable by contract act. 
So agreements which creates, defines, protects rights and obligations, they are considered to be agreements about which Contract Act is going to deal with. Now what are obligations? Obligation is a legal tie which imposes upon a determinate person or persons the act of doing or abstaining from doing a particular act. Abstaining means refraining. Acts, you know, positive act or negative act, do's and don'ts. So, the contract act is going to speak about obligations which are considered to be a legal tie, which imposes upon a determinate person the act of doing or refraining from doing a particular act. Now, you have got agreement with surrender rights. The contract act is not going to deal with that. Surrender deed. Agreements where rights are assigned, the law of contract is not going to deal with such type of agreements. With what type of agreement the contract act is going to deal with? The contract act is going to deal with such type of agreement which creates, defines, protects, preserves rights and obligations. Now coming to the other side, what kind of obligations are going to be dealt with under the contract act? There are social obligations. I may promise Shashank to come and dine with him in a hotel. Supposing I don't come, I do not fulfill my promise, can he go to a court of law? No, this is a social obligation. Social obligations cannot be enforced. See, there is a famous case, Balfour versus Balfour, that speaks about the obligations prevailing between husband and wife. Balfour got employment in Ceylon. So when he was Employed in Ceylon, before going to Ceylon, he promised his wife that so long as I am employed at Ceylon, I will give you by way of maintenance a sum of 30 pounds every week. But as usual, what happened? Promises made in storm are forgotten during calm. So he has forgotten it. He never fulfilled his promise. The wife went to a court of law and wanted to enforce it. The court said, no, you cannot. Because so long as you continue as husband and wife, is what is known as social obligations. There is no legal obligation. On the other hand, in another case, Williams versus Williams, both husband and wife got divorced. The wife said the husband has got to maintain her till she get remarried. But when this fellow never actually sent the maintenance money, which is known as Ali money, the wife, divorced wife filed a suit. And the court said, here there is legal obligation because they are no longer husband and wife. So you find the law of contract is going to deal with legal obligation, not with social obligation. The law of contract is not going to deal with the obligations arising out of a compromise degree. A and B are fighting for passage of a narrow street or narrow lane in which both of them say they have got a right. It is what is known as easementary right. Everybody has got their own right to make use of the passage. And this fellow is tethering his cow and that fellow, the other fellow is tethering the dog. And they are fighting against each other like cow and dog. Now the court actually makes them to enter into a compromise. So you will tether the cow during night time and wash the place the moment it has become a day. And then you have got to tether the dog only in the night as a night watchman. So they enter into some sort of compromise. Well, the obligations that are arising out of a compromise, that cannot be taken cognizance of by the court. They have got to strictly abide by the obligations under which the compromise deed has been entered into. Well, the law of contract is not going to deal with social obligation, obligations arising out of a compromise. Obligations arising out of a tort. What is a tort? Tort is nothing but a civil wrong. I will give you a famous case, Pippin vs. Shepherd. In that, a dentist entered into a contract with a, a dentist to remove the wrong tooth. Instead of removing the wrong tooth, the good tooth, the right tooth has been removed by the doctor. Then the question came up for consideration whether this is a breach of contract or causing injury to the patient. Now, the doctor was liable both under contract as well as under tort. So, tortious obligations arises out of a breach of a duty which a society owes, which a person owes to the society. That is what is known as tort. 
which could be remedied by liquidated damages which is remedied by unliquidated damages not by liquidated damages liquidated damages means that can be ascertained the total amount of loss could be ascertained unliquidated damages is you cannot actually assess the quantum of damages for example if a doctor loses his uh, finger you see the amount of damages you have got to pay to the doctor is enormous on the other hand if an ordinary person loses that is not of much help so you see every part of human body is very important to eke out his livelihood therefore unliquidated damages so the law of contract is not going to deal with obligations arising out of tort so the law of contract is going to deal with what type of obligation obligations arising out of agreement what agreement agreement which creates defines protects preserves rights and obligations so now you can answer the question all contracts are rights and obligations all rights and obligations are not contract so this is the way in which one has got to uh, answer such questions now coming to the other segment agreements and obligations now let us come to the next topic namely sources of contract act or in other words sources of mercantile law the sources of mercantile law are three in numbers number 1 custom what is custom it is habituated conduct or activities of a human being that has been practiced and it has been observed for a long period that becomes a custom your custom is always observed the custom varies from people to people the people in the south they follow a different custom people in the north they follow another uh, type of custom so custom varies between person and person even here itself the custom that is prevalent in one religion is not prevalent in the other for example the custom that is followed by our muslim brothers completely varies from the custom that is followed by hindu brothers so you find custom varies from person to person but custom has got to be respected there is why in the famous case collector of madurai versus mutulamangi thevar custom has got to be respected custom clear proof of usage will outweigh the written text of law now we leave the slippers outside the house when we enter into a house that is hindu custom but whereas our christian brothers they walk into the dining room also with the slippers on so it varies i don't say which is best which is not good and all that but custom varies the custom that is followed by one type of person is not followed by the other it is a what is known as regional custom and religious custom and all that next important thing is lex mercatoria law that is applicable to merchants there is why there is another important source so from that only the contract act has derived lot of uh, lot of information uh, take for example the law that is prevalent among uh, merchants has been adopted from law that uh, belongs to the seaman for example uh, the checks uh, the bill of exchange uh, the letter of credit these are all things which we have derived from uh, lex mercatoria law that is prevalent among merchants the hundis for example the shahjogi hundi the jawabi hundi the namjogi hundis these are all things bearer check order check like that now the next important thing is common law common law that were enforced by kings and uh, by exchequers that is chancellors that is why we have got even in olden days we used to record all the findings of the uh, judges Uh, namely the kings who presided over the courts they used to be preserved under common law pleadings as what is known as king's bench queen's bench 
and uh, chancellor so chancellor is exchequer so see they were actually following the chancellors namely they were following equity that is one of the important sources of mercantile law what is equity good conscience justice equity and good conscience justice equity and good conscience they are considered to be the three important aspects magno part of three aspects of equity so magnum opus of three parts there is a justice good conscience and equity now what is justice justice must be tempered by law see justice see might is not considered to be the right so justice always must be mitigated by mercy that is why even in shakespeare you find the quality of mercy is not strained it drops as a gentle rain from the heaven upon the places beneath it blesseth him that gives and him that takes so goes the passage so always justice means justice hurried is justice buried justice delayed is justice delayed so in jurisprudence how justice has got to be dispensed with the norms and standards have been prescribed there now we are not going to be uh, interested in that but we say equity he who seeks equity must do equity he who wants justice must do justice a person who is actually a, an offender cannot file a suit against another who is also equally an offender when both the people are considered to have done a crime see one fellow cannot actually file a suit against the other so both of them he who comes to court must come with clean hands his hands must be clean clean means not that he should wash his hand with dettol soap clean means his hand must be a uh, perfect in the sense he should not have committed any crime so he who seeks equity cannot do equity he who has infamy on his lips cannot touch the fountain of justice a fellow who is an utter liar he cannot try to seek justice from the court so there is what is known as equity these equity courts were superior to common law courts because the kings uh, later on they were not able to preside over the courts for a long time as a presiding officer because you see they have got to study the custom the custom that was prevalent in yorkshire was different from lancashire and so on so forth so they found it difficult that is why king used to just uh, preside over uh, the courts on three days that is uh, um, easter christmas and pentecost on these three occasions these but however the chancellor namely the exchequer they were actually giving better justice than the common law court kings they used to grant injunction the injunction injunction what is injunction it is nothing but an order pronounced by a court of civil by a civil court compelling a person to do an act which he is compelled under law to do curtailing a person or preventing a person from doing a particular act which he is prevented under law not to do so these are all mandatory injunction prohibitory injunctions and so on so forth so you find these were granted by the equity courts and specific performance that also was granted by the equity courts so you find these are the sources of contract act